Welcome to the Star of Grind. You, you know, you grew up in this home, uh, you know, entrepreneurial home, really. And you're by your mid-teens, you you start to enter these science, you know, contests and things like that. Tell me how that started. What was the motivation behind that, and and yeah. what happened? Tell us, you know, how you did. Um. So, so this mostly came out of well, I guess two two things. One is uh, this this kind of science competition was was very well known and um, and fairly kind of prestigious within Ireland, and so it just got a lot of media attention and everything. So. Uh, it, it was it was fairly obvious that you sort of would would love to take part in it, and uh, and, and a lot of the winning projects that came out of it were, were actually very cool. Um, a couple of years, or like when, when I was in in primary school, uh, which I guess means age you know ten or so or something like that, um, a project one that was uh, a much faster version of RSA, uh, but some like fairly kind of significant um, cryptography research, and uh, the girl who did that ended up. You know, I was going to work with Stephen Wolfram at Wolfram Research, um, and uh, there were there were like a bunch of like pretty substantial mathematics breakthroughs, you know, new theorems, um, and and generally stuff that just like it, as in it didn't seem sort of any way kind of um, I, th I think some of these competitions like for high school students and stuff have a tendency to seem kind of uh, like condescending or junior or like you know you we pat it on the head for like you know making your volcano model or something sure uh, and, and there was no sense of that it sounds like one of the US ones <laughs> so I, I've never been to any of those but uh, you, you were doing crypt cryptography it's a word I can't even really pronounce very well and <laughs> we're doing the volcano yeah um, <laughs> we're screwed <laughs> well so uh, I, I was very taken with it anyway and so when uh, when I got into programming uh, fairly quickly I started wondering um, if, if I could do anything um, for this and after PHP I tried to learn Java and I found I remember spending like a year trying to learn Java and just finding it so miserable and I, I basically concluded that I just I should do something else and not uh, and not be a programmer um, but then I think it was from the, I stumbled across Python from some essay that somebody wrote, and then when I was like reading the Python mailing list or something, um, people were always referencing lists as the inspiration for a lot of things in Python, like you know math and, and reduce and whatever. Uh, and so I went and I looked into Lisp, uh, and Lisp just seemed totally great. Um, <laughs> and so, so I started writing this. Um, I started trying to implement the MSN Messenger protocol. Uh, MSN Messenger was basically the aim of Europe, and like all my friends were on MSN Messenger. Uh, and actually, the, the earlier versions of the MSN Messenger protocol were, were fairly straightforward. So, so I started implementing this. Um, and then sort of I finally got to the point where you could actually like send messages to people. Uh, and, and then and sort of the project sort of was a, or like the, this little prototype thing was now a success, but now I had to sort of figure out you know, what messages the program should actually send. Uh, and so, you know, that, that actually starts to become a pretty pretty interesting problem. And so like the really the, the first version just said like a, you know it, it had a, a repertoire of sort of pre-programmed responses and just sort of picked those at random. And then you realize that like not everyone sort of immediately realizes that, that they're talking to a program uh, and they start to like engage it in conversation. Uh, and so I gave it a name. I called it Isaac. Um, and then started like writing these heuristics to try to have it you know keep the conversation going for as long as possible. Um, and <coughs> And that just became this like really just this, this totally fascinating thing. Uh, and so one of the I'm sure a lot of you guys know of it. Uh, one of the um, the sort of uh, the big challenges in artificial intelligence has been the Turing test, where sort of you uh, you have uh, some human who is able to uh, correspond you know through uh, you know some some terminal with both a, another human and a computer program. And the Turing test proposed by Alan Turing suggests that you know, true in the case of true artificial intelligence, one would not be able to discern you know which was the the program, which is, or excuse me, yeah, which was the program, which is um, the the human, um, and and so now with uh, with uh, instant messaging, basically, you actually kind of I mean, people didn't realize they were playing the Turing test, but you kind of had them playing the Turing test, and you're able to sort of implement this massively parallel Turing test, hmm. uh, and so ended up writing these programs that sort of tried to learn from all the conversations that they were having and and sort of go as far as they could, and so you know built up this like enormous database from hundreds of thousands of conversations, uh, and, and just basically went down that AI rabbit hole, uh, and so that's. That was, so, some work around that was what I first entered into this competition, and that's, that, that was like the first time that I really felt like I'd done something kind of remotely interesting.